Generally, using a wired Ethernet cable over Wi-Fi provides faster speeds and lower latency. Wi-Fi technology and hardware has advanced over the years, but has Ethernet, and does the type of Ethernet cable that you use really matter? I'll cover all of this and more in today's video. Hey everyone, it's Chris here from Home Network Geek, where we talk about everything home networking. If you enjoy this video and you find it helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you drop it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring the bell to turn on notifications. Now let's jump straight in and find out if the type of Ethernet cable that you're using really does matter. For most home networks, the type of Ethernet cable that you use really doesn't make a huge difference and won't have a noticeable impact on the performance of the overall network. This is down to the internet connection itself often being the bottleneck rather than the type of cable that you're using. So let's assume your internet package provides a maximum download speed of 80 megabytes per second. Regardless of whether you're using Cat5e cable or say Cat7 cable, you still only receive a maximum 80 megabytes per second download. That being said, upgrading to a newer standard of cable can lead to faster local network speeds. Faster speeds across your local area network are always beneficial and transferring data between devices can be easier. A couple of examples of this are when you're perhaps streaming some media from your network attached storage or even copying files from one computer to another. So does the type of ethernet cable that you use really matter? Yes, in the sense that you can potentially see some faster speeds across your LAN but no in the sense that you're ultimately limited by your internet speeds. So upgrading the type of cable that you use may not always be worth it. Ethernet cables fall into different categories depending on the standard in which they meet. The different types are rated as category five, category 5e, category six, and so on, but are often shortened to be referred to as cat5, cat5e, cat6, etc. The higher the number in the category, the newer the standard. All ethernet cable is backwards compatible, it's just that the newest standards support faster transfer speeds. The ethernet port built into our devices hasn't really changed, so you can quite happily plug in say a cat6 cable into a device that was manufactured back when the cat6 cable didn't even exist. So if you really wanted to, you could upgrade all of your ethernet cable without fear that it's not going to be compatible with your existing devices. Most new iterations of ethernet cable offer faster speeds and reduced crosstalk, which helps improve the overall performance of the transfer of data through the cable. I'll put up on screen a table which summarizes some of the more commonly used types of ethernet cable in a home network environment and the speeds that they offer. So although it may seem tempting to rip out all your existing ethernet cable and replace it with the latest standard, it's not actually always worth it. One of the older standards, Cat5e, can actually provide speeds up to one gigabit per second, which for most of us is plenty fast enough. So if you're just looking for faster internet speeds, I'd suggest sticking with Cat5e as it's simply good enough for what we need. As I mentioned earlier, it's the internet speeds that you receive that can often be the bottleneck and not the type of cable that you're using. That being said, if you find yourself transferring lots of data between your devices, it may be worth considering an upgrade. If you're buying new cable or perhaps wiring up your home with ethernet for the first time, I'd definitely suggest forgoing Cat5e and using one of the later standards. This is to future-proof yourself more than anything and at the end of the day, the newer versions don't cost that much more than the older versions. Now something to keep in mind with Cat7 cable is that it can be a bit trickier to work with as the foil shielding can get damaged when the cable is bent. So in this case, you may want to opt for something like Cat6 or Cat6a cable instead. So my thoughts are that if you're already using Cat5e cable, it's probably not worth upgrading. But if you're buying new cable anyway or potentially want faster local area network speeds, I would suggest going for something like Cat6 or newer. Now at a quick glance, all ethernet cables look the same, regardless of which type it is. Telling the different types apart based on thickness or the color of the outer jacket is not only difficult, but also very unreliable. And all ethernet cables use an RJ45 connector at the end, so you can't use this to tell them apart either. The easiest way to identify the type of ethernet cable that you're using is to read the printed text on the outside jacket. This should tell you which standard the cable meets as well as how much bandwidth the cable is capable of transmitting. Should you be purchasing new cable online, the product description should clearly state which type it is and therefore which standard that it meets. So although the type of ethernet cable that you're using can limit speed in some ways, for the majority of you, it really doesn't matter. As a minimum, I'd suggest using Cat5e cable as this is capable of supporting speeds of one gigabit per second and is plenty fast enough for the vast majority of people. In fact, I'm using Cat5e cable throughout my entire home and I have absolutely no reason to upgrade. I personally wouldn't see the benefit from upgrading 
and it's not as if it's a two minute job either. But if you've never used ethernet cable before and you're buying new, I'd probably opt for Cat6A cable, which is capable of 10 gigabits per second and has a bandwidth of 500 megahertz. And this is to future-proof yourself more than anything. So I hope you enjoyed this one, guys, and you found it helpful. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you could drop it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring the bell to turn on notifications. Don't forget to head on over to homenetworkgeek.com where I have a ton of articles on everything home networking, and I'll see you in the next video.